Hi guys, Exeter Rider here. Welcome back to the channel. This week I'm test riding the iconic BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Okay, so just about to get on the bike. Um, what I want to make you aware of actually is that these bikes are available with different seat options and uh, not only the seat options but also the, the chassis options as well. For example, if you go for the low seat then you can just have a literally a lower seat but if you go for the extra low seat then they can actually change the frame to, to, to go even lower. It's probably a good idea for, for, for most people actually but it, it, the options are there. That's the point I want to get across there. Okay, so the first thing that strikes you when you're on a, a bike like this is, first of all, how wide the handlebars are. You get absolutely loads of leverage on it, which obviously you need for the off-road stuff. And how light it is to handle, to be fair. Just stand up on it, on the pegs. It's just like standing up on the floor. The pegs are so nice and and large and again you can move the whole bike uh, with micro movements just with the pegs alone uh, handlebars are at a lovely height mirrors are at a lovely height um, you feel you've got absolutely loads of power you can certainly tell that you've got a big wheel on the front just the way it uh, flicks around and it feels muscular. Yeah. As strange as that may sound, you know, this this whole tank set up here and, and the like, it's, um, you can tell it's sort of ready for an adventure. And it certainly would be nice to have an adventure on this. Um, the people say that these bikes are too high, but what you have to remember is that they are designed for travelling, uh, you know, long distances with a lot of luggage. So, of course, when you get a lot of luggage, it's going to sink the back down a little bit anyway. So that has to be taken into account. Obviously, off-road, these are going to be very, very uh, uh, good. I wouldn't say it'd be particularly fun. I mean, it's, it's sort of an advanced off-roader, I would say. You kind of need to know what you're doing with this sort of bike. Because if you drop it, it's going to be an absolute beast to uh, beast to, to pick up again. Slow speed manoeuvring is, is pretty good. So I've got a bit of a, a reach to the floor there on tiptoes, um, but it's not as bad as you may think because the seat's quite thin on it, so that's okay. I'd feel quite confident on filtering on this one as well because the handlebars are above the wing mirrors, generally speaking. I guess one thing that has surprised me a bit is that there's a, although the bars are at a nice height, it's still quite a reach over the tank to the bars. It's not excessive, uh, but it's still further forward than what I was expecting in my head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pop down here and do the walk round, and then uh, I'll try it on a faster road and see what it's like there. Okay then folks, this is the BMW R1250 GS. It's uh, a big old bike, as you, as you can see. Um, quite heavy as well. But at the end of the day, this bike is built for a purpose and it's built for going off road and, uh, and having long adventures. But essentially, you know, as I say, this is a, it's going to be a, a touring bike and a go anywhere bike. And for that, it's very good. Um, I wouldn't say that the, the ground clearance is particularly huge on it. Well, we have got the crash bars on it. Uh, so when you do drop it going off road or wherever, then you're going to be OK. The adventure model has uh, certain uh, aspects that are different than the normal uh, R1250 uh, GS, mainly being the fuel tank and the scaffolding around it for the uh, taking the panniers and lots of other things as well. But I'll put all the spec up in the usual way at the very end of the video and, um, and you can look through that, okay? It's again, as you would expect a GS to be, it soaks up the bumps like, like it's nothing. It's ever so smooth, ever so soft. We've got the uh, Dynamic ESA, I have to try and remember all these things, Dynamic ESA on it as well, which is the adjustable suspension, essentially. It does do a, a, an amazing 10 out of 10 job of soaking up the bumps. 
Power delivery, it's got absolutely loads again. Uh, I think it's 143 newton meters of torque and it's a 1243 cc engine, somewhere around there. I'll put all the details up at the end. Once you uh, open up this bike, I mean, it's great at the slow speed stuff, but when you want this to turn into a beast, it will absolutely fly. It's uh, the amount of power and torque on this bike. It's unbelievable. Um, very, very impressive, you know, and uh, you can't, you don't really feel the shift cam kick into place, but you just know that it's get, it gets a second boost of energy. And as I say, even in second gear, you can roll on and uh, it will just take off, it'll fly. It's got LED lighting all around, I do believe, and everything about it is high spec. You know, anything that a bike can, can have electronically, this bike is gonna have. It is quite heavy. Uh, I, I think um, you'd have to be quite a seasoned off-roader to um, have the guts to first of all pay for the bike and then take it off-road. So you've got the old classic beak on this BMW. Uh, we've got the twin disc BMW brakes at the front and we've got Brembo's at the rear. Both of them, are the, the brakes are absolutely amazing. They're, they're very, very good. Nothing, you can't fault them at all. Very, very good indeed. Okay, switch gear wise, we've got the cruise control flashes on the front, uh, lights, hazards, uh, the ABS, which you can switch off on the back on this one so you can get the back out a bit more, which is very handy if you're doing off-road. Menu button, indicators, horn. Okay, so on the other side, we've got the heated grips on the top. You can't quite see that there, but there's a button up there for that. Um, always a nice option. Uh, mode selector, uh, start and stop button, and the BMW SOS feature, which again is absolutely brilliant and uh, certainly something you would probably want if you're going to do some out in the wilderness uh, adventure touring. Regarding the screen, it's, uh, it does a very good job. It deflects the wind uh, right over your head um, and it's nothing to complain about there. It's very, very good. The perfect size, really. So again, in the normal BMW way, we've got the shaft drive to the rear wheel. That's nice and solid, and you don't have to think about the, any chain maintenance, which is a major bonus over other brands um, and its competition. Coming around the side of the bike, these uh, foot pegs are, are really quite large. They're nice to get your feet on. They're nice to stand up on. They're serrated, so you, you, you've got plenty of grip on them as well. See, they're not rubber pegs because that would just be slippery and slidey in the mud and, and wet. Okay, so to get on the bike, it's easier to stand on the foot peg here to get your leg over the bike. Uh, it's a very, very strong feeling bike. To get it off the stand is a little bit of a pull. But again, once you're up there, you're okay. Uh, I'm 5'8", I've got a 30 inch inside leg and this bike, particular bike, um, there are different seat options. I am sort of tiptoe on the balls of my feet there. Um, if I put my foot on the pegs, I've got a nice angle there, uh, almost perfect angle actually, um, for this sort of style bike. Okay, so to start the bike up, it's a lovely sounding bike. Sound to it really. Um, there's so many uh, extra options that you can get for this bike. It's um, you can really tailor it to what you're going to use the bike for. Overall, it, it is a slightly top heavy. It's more top heavy than what I was expecting actually. I mean, maybe it is just the same as the RT and the other sort of 1250 shift cam bikes. It, it's probably psychological to be honest with you. Um, obviously, you're you're sat up a bit more than than on the other uh, 1250s. Again, it's not disappointing. It's, uh, it's a heck of a good bike. And this, if this is the sort of riding that you're going to do and you're going to go touring, then you look no further. You cannot go wrong with this bike. Right, let's get on and have another ride. Okay, folks, back on the bike. Uh, we've got a little compartment in here as well for keep your bits and bobs and uh, odd coins here and there. Um, to start the bike, we've got to push the button there. And then the screen will fire up. Screens don't get much better than that, do they? Um, so to flick through the, the, the menu and the screen, um, if I click the menu button, I've got all the settings there. Um, what else have we got? Telephone, media, navigation. Obviously, got the BMW navigation thing there, which can be controlled via the uh, spin wheel. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's, there's plenty to look at there. Um, 
Am I making it sound like I know what I'm talking about? Because I haven't. <laughs> I haven't got a clue, unfortunately. And it's something I need to just learn a bit more about, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but electronics-wise, typical BMW. It's got absolutely loads of it, and it's all very useful stuff as well. It's, uh, there's no gimmicks about it. Um, start her up. Again, with the uh, stands on these, all these 1250s, it's in such a nice position because it's, it, you push it out in front of you um, rather than sort of trying to feel around, you know, just underneath your, your legs sort of thing. Um, it's got quite a nice effect, that. The gearbox, although it's very um, nice and positive, it's one of those gearboxes you sort of have to shove it into gear as opposed to uh, it just falling. It'd be great to go on a, a proper adventure on one of these bikes, go abroad with it or something. Or even just a, a trip round the coastline of Britain. Fantastic. It's amazing when you try one of these bikes, just how much you get the feel of the, um, the off-road capabilities of it. Of course it's going to be fine on the road as well, but kind of feels right that it, it, it just lends itself to want to be on uh, off-road. God, it's just so much power in these bikes. You don't even need to be in a low gear to, for it to pull, it just goes. The seat is so nice and it's got like a gel sort of uh, feel to it. You sort of uh, it molds you into the seat, all the pressure spreads around your, your butt. Lovely. <coughs> Alright, let's open her up, see what she can do. You can see the speed there, second gear. Straight away, I'm straight up to 70. The screen is quite noisy, um, but I'm not getting too much but uh, it is adjustable, so you can move it around. Um, I think it might be on its sort of mid setting at the moment. So yeah, that's not too bad really. I say it's not buffeting in any way, it's getting rid of all the air, but just a tad on the noisy side. But it is, to be fair, it is a uh, very windy day today, so it's probably not helping. I'm so comfortable right now doing this with cruise control. I know I've got to go back to Exeter in a minute on my NC. And I love my NC, don't get me wrong. Um, but having the um, cruise control, having the nice seat, and just that extra power. I mean, I don't really need any more power in the NC, it's fine as it is. But uh, you, you can't have enough power sometimes, can you, on, on the motorway. The more you've got, the more comfortable it is to, to ride. <laughs> somebody on a cruiser there just give me a massive wave rather than a nod um, but yeah if you've got any questions about it just ask away um, obviously I couldn't show you any off-road capabilities of the bike um, good on bike there you go um, but I don't know maybe down the line I've got some stuff lined up next year actually yeah it would be great to, great to try it off-road the more I'm on this, the more I'm feeling at home with it. Um, but just just for um, general commuting and things like that, it uh, just makes light work of everything, really. I think that's the best way to put it. But as normal, you know, I I'm just getting used to this bike, and we're getting on so well. And I've got to take it back now. Which is fair enough, they give me a nice amount of time on it. So, uh, you know, I've got, got, got the feel of the bike. But again, that TFT screen, what a dream, eh? Absolutely beautiful. Just standing up, it's it's great as well. Slow speed manoeuvring. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to be able to try one of these. Big thanks to um, BMW in Plymouth, as always. Um, they've been an absolute gem to me. They really have. They've been uh, fantastic in letting me try the bikes and all that. Um, who knows, my, uh, there's a high, very high chance that my next bike would be a BMW, uh, now that I've tried them all. Not so much saying the 1200, I think that's probably more than what I need. 
as ever down here as I always say the same thing but uh, do give the uh, video a thumbs up if you would because I want to make more of these videos uh, it's something I really in enjoy doing and um, met a lot of nice people through doing it as well it's, it's not easy doing it either um, a lot of time goes into it editing and getting on the bikes and uh, all the other bits that have to be done um, for very little reward but I enjoy doing it and that's the main thing um, thank you to Ocean BMW if you haven't been down there they've got a small cafe there they've got a, a second hand section up there I don't know if you can see it in that glass uh, atrium thing up there um, a real good group of guys there as well and ladies um, always there to help a fantastic demo fleet absolutely loads of uh, demos they got down there um, so huge thank you to Ocean BMW go and have a look I think you can see for yourself it's a heck of a place awesome uh, thank you very much I'll leave you with the specs and uh, and all the rest of it and I'll see you next week thanks guys cheerio